Yes, <clears throat> welcome all to lecture number four. Um, lecture number four is about um, random variables and information contained in a random variable. So that's what we will study. <clears throat> and the way to study is to start with the definition. So now we fix once and for all, in a sense, we fix a probability space. So this is a probability space. <clears throat> and let's recall what it meant. It means that uh, omega is a set, f is a sigma algebra, and p is a probability measure. which assigns a number to every member of the sigma algebra f. And then we assume that we have a random variable y mapping from omega to the real line. Why real line? Because most of the modeling is <clears throat> on real uh, valued numbers. But if you want it, you could change this into your favorite space. Um, as long as the space would be, let's say, to be on the safe side, it should be Polish. So it should be second countable and separable metric space. So if you want it to be a metricable space. So if you want to be general, you could you could think uh, <clears throat> this is a much more general thing. But for, for concreteness, it's helpful to think that this is the real line. <clears throat> and keep in mind that uh, whatever we learn about the real line valued uh, random variables today will generalize rather easily, usually without doing anything uh, to a much more general setting, like random vectors, random graphs, and so on. So this is a random variable. <clears throat> Let's recall what it means. It means that it is a function from the omega to the real line, and it has one property, namely, it's measurable function. What it means, it means that the pre-images behave well. So it means that uh, the pre-image of a uh, Borel set B belongs to F for all B being a measurable set on the real line. That means a Borel set. And what we will do is actually, we will abbreviate this just to write B. So that's going to be B for named after Emily Borel, a French mathematician who was active around 100 years ago at the time of Lebec and others. So this B is called the Borel sigma algebra on the real line. And we only will, we don't use this, we just write calligraphic B for this. <clears throat> That's about it. So then um, and that's what we should know already. So the key definition for now is um, in a sense, um, the way of thinking is that this uh, omega is thought to be kind of a collection of um, everything. So it, should, it could be thought as a universe and everything could be kind of modeled inside omega, and we might think of it as an abstract uh, space of this sort. This would be the sigma algebra related to everything, and this would be the distribution, probably the distribution, or the joint distribution of all random variables in the universe. <clears throat> but then when we want to focus on a certain random variable y, um, we should, we, or we could also think, okay, what is the information um, content in this random variable and what type of kind of events can we recognize by observing values of y. And um, for that purpose, uh, we have a new definition. We have a new concept called um, sigma of y. And what is this? It is defined as the smallest sigma algebra on uh, omega such that um, 
y is um, measurable. So what it means, uh, we could think it's the smallest sigma algebra and we could denote uh, it with some dummy, dummy variable y. Um, calligraphic y is such that y is um, measurable from y to the Borel sets. <clears throat> so this would be the definition in a sense. Um, and again, would this uh, sigma algebra exist? Well, if you think of placing uh, f in place of y, so then, because we assume that y is a random variable, so that's uh, why f can be uh, placed here and this statement is true. So we are thinking of some sigma algebra which is actually smaller than f. It could be f itself, but it could be something smaller. So, so it's kind of a smaller sigma algebra uh, compared to, to f. <clears throat> and um, to understand what this should mean, or how could we define this actually? So we could think, okay, what does this actually require? It requires that, um, what we require is that uh, the pre-image by Y of any Borel set B should be in this um, sigma multiple Y for all B being a Borel set on the real line. So that's what we want. In a sense, we want to be economical. We don't want to use the full sigma algebra F. We want to kind of work with only the smallest uh, sigma algebra that we could um, play with. And, um, and uh, how to kind of clarify this definition, what this really means? Well, <clears throat> we could also think that um, we could define, we could put a new definition here. Let's define something called um, sigma. No, let's define something called y minus one of a set. Now, this is a kind of pre-image of a collection of sets. How do we define it? We define this uh, symbol as the collection of all pre-images that we can make by Borel sets and this y in this sense. So here is a new definition as well. So this is a shorthand notation as you see. And we need to be careful. Now we look at the pre-image of a collection of sets. So that means that we look at all the pre-images composed from the collection of sets, calligraphic B. And uh, with this notation, what we want can be rephrased. Can you see how? We can rephrase what we want as saying that um, every member of uh, this collection, y minus uh, one calligraphic B, it's a collection of sets. So every member of this should be in this collection Y that we are looking at. Yes, does it make sense? Okay, I assume it does. So if this is what we want, so that is, we can rephrase this still. It means that um, the collection of these uh, sets, it's a collection of sets in Omega, that should be a sub collection of Y. Yep. So actually with this notation, with abstractness of sets, things actually start to become simpler. 
hoping so. Namely, namely, <coughs> we can now redefine what is um, sigma of y. So, hence, we can conclude that actually sigma of y is the what we also denote by calligraphic y. This is now the smallest um, sigma algebra, which contains all of these members in this collection of sets. So it is actually, let me take this calligraphic away. We don't need it anymore. We can define using a different notation that this is the, the sigma algebra collected by um, generated by a collection of sets with um, this set collection being the pre-images of Borel sets. Okay. And this is a familiar thing for us already. We take, we could take an arbitrary collection of sets, calligraphic C, and we can all, for any collection of sets on Omega, we can look for the smallest sigma algebra containing this collection. Yeah. So now maybe it's time to clean up a bit. And uh, this was kind of um, what's kind of more verbal thing to do. So we can define this way. Now that we saw the verbal thing, let's also take this out because we uh, remember this one. So we clean a bit. Here as well, and here we only write calligraphic D, and then we can take this definition away, and we can now be more abstract and brief and say that the sigma algebra generated by Y is by definition, it's the smallest sigma algebra containing the collection pre-images of Borel sets. And this is our definition in a brief uh, setting. 